Hello everyone, my name is Rohan and welcome back to learning computer science in two years. I am on week number 13 right now and uh, this is a small miracle. I don't think, I don't think anything I've done before, like uh, that, that required a lot of self-motivation, right? So let's say if I tried to learn programming before, because I have, I'm sure of it, or just a diet or exercise or all these type of things that you need a lot of motivation for, uh, I don't think I've ever been this successful. And I do believe that I have uh, you guys to thank for that. So thank you very much for watching the videos and leaving comments. Uh, you are keeping me on the, on the straight and narrow, so to speak. Um, there's a bit of a accountability relationship between me and you guys, even if you don't know it. I rely on you <laughs> to watch these videos and leave comments so that I don't completely stray off the path, right? Anyway, let's get into this week's timesheet. As you can see, it, it really was a good week. Uh, the total amount of hours is 28, so I mean, I'm right up there. I lost an hour here or there. It's fine, let's be honest. This is a good week, all things considered. And uh, yeah, you'd also see that I did a lot more project related stuff this week than, than maybe course related stuff, but I'll get into why that happened just now. So let's talk about design patterns and software architecture. Right, so look, the, these two courses, like I alluded to last week, they are part of a, a bigger, let's say course or certificate or whatever you want to call it on software design. They really just follow on the object oriented design course for which I had a, a nice rant in my previous video. They do suffer from the same problems, unfortunately. And that is, well, that's what it is now, right? So you all know about that. If you don't go watch a previous video, if the rant gets too much, you know, stop watching that video. <laughs> But anyway, so let me talk about what I kind of got from these two. First of all, you'll notice that I spent three and four hours on them respectively. That's not a lot of time. The thing is, that's all the content there is. So when I started these, I decided, you know what, I'm just going to watch the videos, not at a higher speed or anything like that. It's not like I don't want to learn something, even if it's by accident, you know, just learning something through watching the video. So I watch them at a normal pace. I engage with the little quizzes that they put in between the, in the videos, right? The, the normal multiple choice stuff or whatever. Just by doing that, I was finished in three hours for design patterns and four hours for software architecture. So they are really short. They are not very dense. It's not a lot of content. And I guess uh, if you really got into the project or the, the you know, the assignments, uh, that'll pad out quite a bit, but like I mentioned in the previous video, I'm not doing any of the assignments for these courses, these three specific ones. There might be a silver lining to these courses, right? So first of all, the course notes that they provide are actually very good. They're very good. They are complete. It's all written down. It's easy to go back and reference that, right? Which is really a big deal, right? So you can't necessarily easily reference a video if that's all there was. But the notes are good enough that you can easily, well, they're actually very good. So you can easily reference those. And because it's not you know, a 40 hour thing, there's not a lot of stuff to search through, right? So if ever in the future, I feel like, you know what, there is probably a better way to, to approach a specific problem, or maybe there's a design principle that I can utilize to make it better in the long term, you know, make it scalable or maintainable or, or whatever one of these, you know, these other types of, um, requirements that you might have for a project. And I could easily go back and I could read, uh, some of these notes and let's say I find a specific word or a thing that I like I think it might work that I can go Google and search for a different video online Maybe on YouTube somewhere. Maybe there's somebody that just explained it a bit better So it's not a bad idea to do these courses But what I recommend is watch the videos save all the downloadable content I would really not pay for access to more of the assignments or anything like that um, Again refer to last week's video if if you want to know why I don't think that's a good idea that's that's basically all i have to say about those and and you know what that means actually funny enough that means i am finished with core programming so i'm done with the core programming block of osu <laughs> pretty incredible honestly <laughs> 
I didn't actually think that I would be done this quickly. So these last three courses being as short as they were really accelerated my progress significantly. Uh, next up, I guess, is CS Tools. Specifically, there's only one course there and it's the missing semester of your CS education, which I'm looking forward to. That's what I'm going to be diving into next week. After those two courses on the Monday and the Tuesday, I was kind of feeling a bit glum about the whole OSU thing or just, you know, these courses. They, they, they just really left a bad taste in my mouth. So I thought, uh, you know what, I'm going to take a few days, uh, take the rest of the week and not even think about the courses. I'm just going to go back to my project and see if I can't spend some good quality time figuring out the last few bugs, fixes, features, etc. So there were a couple of features and one kind of like a bug that I needed to fix. Okay, so the first thing, the feature, was that the admin person would want to manage the jumping castles in some way. So what does manage the jumping castles mean? Well, first of all, let's say you buy a new one. You wanna add it to your existing list of castles, right? Um, and it needs to be available on the website. So I built in that ability to do that. And then also, let's say you wanna edit the price, you know, maybe the prices go up or something like that. So I put in that as well. You could you could also make the castle available or not. So what happened uh, a week ago or so is two of the castles got damaged and they realized immediately, oh no, this is a problem because we can't take them off, which means people are still booking these and then they have to remember and it's like, oh no, this one actually, sorry, you can't book this and they have to let them know over the phone and then they cancel the booking, the castle becomes available again, then somebody else. And look, a short term solution was just to book the castles yourself uh, for multiple days and then you know, they're not available, uh, but that's a, not a good solution. So I built a better solution for that because the castles might be, you know, indefinitely damaged. You know, we don't know. Maybe the damage is so bad you can't repair them, but you might want to delete the castle or you just want to deactivate it for a prolonged period until such a time arrives that you can actually repair it. So that's kind of the last thing that we wanted to do. So I built all of those. That was one chunk of the project. I did that on one day. <laughs> the admin also needed a way to be able to generate a list of all the castles or all the bookings for a specific date range. So previously that didn't really work. What you did was you would just go and say, generate list for a date, one day, and they would only give you that day. So I expanded this a bit so you can put a date range and then you can get multiple um you know maybe for a whole weekend from like the thursday to the sunday they'll give you everything so that if you want to be prepared you can you know work on preparing the castles maybe the the thursday or the wednesday whatever uh, for the entire weekend and you don't have to do multiple downloads also a thing that was happening sometimes the changes in the bookings happened quite rapidly and you don't want to download a CSV file every single time. You just kind of want to refresh a web page maybe. So I also made it possible to display this list on the website and I'll show you all of this now. And then finally, uh, and this was a big problem actually in some ways, and this is kind of a bug, right? This is kind of a bug. I needed to be able to enable people to book across multiple months. So people don't book jumping castles for weeks and weeks, right? So that's not what I mean when I say book across multiple months. But what does happen is sometimes you want to book it for the Friday and the Saturday. And the Friday is the 30th of the month and the Saturday is the first. You literally, that's impossible. You can't do that because the, the button didn't exist on the, <laughs> the page where you selected your date. So that's a problem that I had to fix. And what that meant, ugh, this meant I had to basically redo so much of the back end code because and this is probably where some design would have been helpful. But anyway, I decided at some point that dates will be three different strings. So I'm not using date time um, throughout the program. I am using it in some places, but basically it's three different strings. It's a day string, which became a list of days. It's a month string and a year string. And that was it. So now I need to do also make a list of months and potentially even a list of years if you think about it. Um, this was a bad idea. This is just bad. The, this didn't work. So what I had to do, since I couldn't really go and reformat the whole database where this is how I was storing the data, I needed to build little converters in everywhere in the program where these dates were ever referenced. So every time a date was referenced, from the, the SQL table, it'll get it from the table, it'll convert it to a proper date time format, and then you can do anything you like 
right? If you have a proper daytime format, you can just say add one day, for instance. And it knows automatically if adding one day takes you to the next month or the next year or the previous month, if you subtract now, etc. So that simplifies all that nonsense. Um, it also knows if there are 30 or 31 days. You know, I don't need to worry about any of these details anymore. In hindsight, I should have done that from the start, but I didn't. So, and if I want to change everything so it works like that, I'm going to have to change the database. And that is like the lowest level of this program, right? That is the lowest level. I can still change a lot of stuff in the Python code. That's not a problem. I can change stuff in the HTML. That's not a big problem. Uh, the JavaScript, eh, JavaScript, sometimes it's a bit of a problem, but uh, it's also not such a big problem, but changing the database. Oh, yeah, I don't, I don't, I'm not, not looking, for, I don't want to do that, right? So for now, they, I did a bit of a workaround, right? I have a conversion thingy that happens every time somebody queries a database. It might slow it down, but look, this is not some site that's being used by millions of people. So we can take a hit on performance without worrying too much. Let me actually show you some of this now. So if we go over to the screen, uh, I'm already logged in and I'm on the managed castles tab. So in admin, there's now a managed castles tab. And here you can see you can now specify a new castle. You can give it an ID. The big one is name. You can make it like 12 by 12 by 50 meters high. It's a skyscraper castle. Amount, ach, I mean, 5,000. Um, availability, so this is just to be able to select initially, do you want it available from day one? Um, let's just say yes. And yeah, then you click, whoopsie. Then you click that and it breaks. And it breaks because, <gasps> oh no. Okay, it breaks because, good thing you caught this. It breaks because there's already a, a castle 50. I've done a test before. And it is important that you don't duplicate the castle ID because that's your primary key. So let's just make it 51 and add the castle. Boom, it adds the castle. I almost felt my heart. <laughs> it's like, oh, I'm demoing this thing now. Yeah, it's not live. I could edit it out, but uh, I'm not going to I'm not going to do that. But anyway, there we go. Now we have the big castle for 5000 Rand. You can see you can uh, do stuff with it. You can now change the price. You can make it unavailable. So how you make things unavailable is you just click change status. I mean, true and false. We, we know what it means, right? We know false means it's not available. True means it's available, blah, blah, blah. Um, and that means that these castles won't show up anywhere. It won't actually, it will not even show up in the gallery. So if I go to the gallery, you'll see that our first castle is castle number five. So one, two, three, and four is all now, they, they don't exist anymore. And you'll see there's a new one, the big one. Now it doesn't have a, a picture. I didn't give it, I don't have a picture for it. <laughs> Obviously there's no castle that's 50 meters high. Um, so it just puts this placeholder text there. So let's actually look at some of the other ones. So uh, update bookings, that's an old one. Here's the booking list. So we can go here and let's, uh, let's select some time that I was testing a lot. So there's a lot of stuff to see. Okay, that's a long, that's not a weekend. That's a bit more than a weekend. But um, you can see, so this is basically what you would see. These are only confirmed bookings. You can see them, you can then email the CSV. So this will just, whatever you see here, it's gonna be sent to you immediately. And uh, yeah, that's that one. Yes, this one where you can actually now book across, you know, multiple months. So you can actually, and I also change the coloring and stuff like that a bit. So just so it looks a bit nicer anyway. But yeah, that's basically it. So I can book now, on Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, because even though it's over this weekend was a bit of a problem, the 30th and the 1st, as I said, uh, that's a prime example. Uh, but now you can book like that, doesn't matter. And you'll see it could be a problem maybe in December, I think. Yeah, potentially if you wanted the Saturday and the Sunday, so you want the 31st and the 1st, and now that would be across multiple days and years. I just had to add that, change the color coding, blah, blah, blah. And uh, it works pretty much the same way. Also did a few kind of small little quality changes on like the, the layout of the invoice and stuff like that. It's not, not big stuff. That's pretty much it for the website. It's in a place now where I could almost just leave it like. There's no new features being requested. There are also no other bugs that I know of that I want to go and fix uh, for now. <laughs> I don't know when that's gonna change. 
yes, I can go and I can restructure the database and stuff like that to, to make it optimal. But I think it's not necessary for now, first of all. And potentially I could actually try to do a different project. So I was thinking of, you know, ugh, there's a lot of things that you can do with like Python automation type things, right? I can make a little Python uh, program that maybe helps me with my personal finances or you know, automate some of the daily things that people do. You know, there's a lot of videos on YouTube, etc., that that does that. Just to get out of this project a bit and do something else. And maybe if I start fresh, I can actually now incorporate some of the lessons that I've learned from that start, from this project, and also from the courses that I've finished since starting this project. That's that's one of the motivations of potentially trying a new project. Maybe something smaller uh, that I can get in and out of relatively quickly, like a small little Python application or something like that. So I'll think about that and uh, I'll obviously update you if I think of anything. But in the meantime, I'll probably just continue with the OSU course related things and they'll probably have all projects that I need to do anyway. So might not even need this additional project for myself. But it's still good to have a project that you can put on your portfolio, etc. The only other thing then is calculus. So calculus, again, it's I'm just getting through it. I did nine hours this week, so another good productive calculus week and uh, nothing else really to say about that calculus is just going <laughs> and uh, i didn't finish it it's a lot of work the calculus takes a lot of time but i'm enjoying it it's it's a challenge that's for sure so i'll update you when something major happens like i finish it and that is it thank you so much for watching uh, this video uh, if you like the video please click on that button uh, subscribe potentially if you want to follow my progress and uh, leave a comment. I try to reply to most or all of them if I can. And uh, I certainly can at this stage because it's not like there's millions of people watching these videos yet. Leave a comment, see what I have to say. And I will see you in the next one. Cheers.